Hey, this is Tony here with Salt Strong, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you a quick tip that you can use when you're out there on the water to replace your popping corks with topwater lures. So, as you can see here, I have the Head and Super Spook Jr., and then I have one hook still attached to the lure. As you can see, that front hook is still there. I replaced it with an inline hook that will just help uh, reduce line tangles, especially because you have a leader attached to the back end of the lure. As you can see, I removed that rear hook. I also removed the split ring. So the leader is attached directly to the back of that lure with a nice snug knot. You don't want to use a loop knot or a split ring because you don't want to have uh, too much movement on the back end there because that will increase your chances of fouling up your hook or your line rather onto that hook. So attach a liter length of your uh, liking to the back of that. Now I usually go with about a foot, a uh, foot and a half to close to two feet depending on how deep I'm fishing, but I don't want to go too long because that will uh, hinder your ability to cast. Now the lure that I have rigged up on the back end or the leader or the business end as I like to call it, this is just a chase baits flick prawn uh, shrimp imitation great type of lure to use with a popping cork, or in this case, a uh, popping cork substitute, which is the topwater lure. And then I do have a loop knot attaching the leader to uh, that lure, just because I want that lure to be moving around uh, as much as possible when I am retrieving uh, this setup. So as you can see, you are basically working two lures. You have two lures in the water because you can have fish, sometimes they will hit uh, the top water or they may strike it short and then it will follow up with a soft plastic and they'll typically go after that soft plastic when they uh, short strike the top water. Now on the front end of the top water you're going to notice I have a small section of fluorocarbon here. That also helps alleviate any line tangles you may have when you cast uh, the setup out. You have a nice stiff piece of fluorocarbon up front there. You can go with a thicker piece than your leader material that will just uh, keep it a lot more stiffer and reduce line tangles much more effectively than very thin or flexible mono or fluorocarbon. Now I only use about five to six inches, not too long because you don't want to take away uh, from the length that you can put on the back end where your lure is going to be. slam shady color paddle tail on here I had a shrimp on here but ended up losing it unfortunately put this paddle tail on and see if we can get a decent trout Thank you. 
with the lure. There we go. <laughs> you got it that time. Now when you're retrieving the setup, it's basically the same thing you would do if you were using a popping cork. You would do a few quick pops and then let your lure settle back down, a few quick pops and just repeat that process. The amount of time you want to wait between uh, popping the lure or the cork or whatever you want to call this at this point really depends on how active the fish are or how deep you're fishing. The deeper you're fishing, obviously the longer you want to wait for your bait to settle back down to the bottom. So again, just a quick tip, or I guess you can actually call this a hack for using a topwater lure as a popping cork. So if you have any questions about this, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Also, if you have some experience actually doing this and want to share that uh, experience with us, definitely let us know down below. Until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.